episode is made possible by Audible. Let's watch Second Thoughts, Why Liberalism Won't Solve Anything video. You feel, however, that uh, that we're making progress in, in this country no, and worldwide? No, 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 no. Uh, I will never say that progress is being made. If you stick a knife in my back nine inches and pull it out six inches, there's no progress. Mm -hmm. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. The progress is healing the wound that's the below that's One a of my favorite quotes made. by And Alan they haven't Max. even begun to pull a knife out, much less try and pull, uh, heal the wound. You have, I got to pee, I'll be back. even admit the knife is there. Hello, internet types. On this episode of Old Man Yells at Cloud, we're complaining about the politics of lesser evil, or harm reduction discourse. And as we get started, allow me to read out the long, tedious disclaimer paragraph I've spent more time on than the rest of this video. Vote blue or don't vote blue. If you live anywhere here, it probably doesn't even matter. And no matter where you live, it'll usually only matter a tiny bit. Just enough to make it worth getting it over with and voting but probably not much more. Not for nothing, voting sucks because the blue team sucks. I know that. I also know that letting presidents go from far right, fascist, proto-fascist, whatever, to the same guy but worse four years later, and at whatever pace they dictate is bad too. Worse even. I am well aware of all that. I'm not gonna try to deny any of these claims in this video. Stopping some form of far-right politics with regular right-wing politics doesn't make anybody happy except those on the right. But just because I know that fact doesn't mean I won't do it when I think there's an option. This week, we're looking at the discourse of lesser evils. Because even if, at the very least, part of the lesser evil political strategy does stave off some of the most evil politics the previous four years have cooked up, another part of that discourse is weaponized to narrow down politics to what you do at the ballot box and nothing else. And that's a big problem worth making a video about. Because if you're just a normal person who considers themselves a liberal, and you've used this sort of rhetoric before, I truly, genuinely believe you have good intentions. This video is hopefully just going to point out the ways in which those intentions don't always match up with the consequences. Either because politicians will take advantage of your good intentions for stuff you disagree with, or because you'll spend so much effort on the elections that everything else kind of disappears between electoral cycles. Okay, disclaimer over. Back to having fun. Fart noise. <laughs> Great. Now we're having fun again. Take my internet hand. Don't, don't worry about how it feels, I have a condition. And let's talk about this. First, we should go over how much the lesser evil stuff works out to be in the end by giving a little account of the Biden presidency so far. Consider this when you spend so much effort on the presidential election. Because despite Biden running on, quote, the most progressive democratic agenda America has ever seen, his policies amount to little more than taking one step forward after the Trump presidency took two steps back. On the plus side, Biden has canceled plans for the Keystone Pipeline, has reversed Trump-era policies on methane emissions, has overturned the Muslim ban, freed up resources to deal with the 2017 hurricane that hit Puerto Rico, passed a child tax credit to reduce child poverty, extended the pause on student loan repayment, and resumed a pause on federal executions. Those are the handful of things that Biden has done that most on the left consider fine-ish. Not progress, just I can't believe it got to this point in the first place kind of policy. We're Mac Attack. We're Brandon fans here on this broadcast when it comes to his Afghanistan pullout, okay? Sure, could have been done better, but, you know, leaders sometimes demonstrate moral courage uh, at the face of adversity from the entirety of mainstream media and, and uh, critics all around. And uh, the Mac Attack did it, Jack. He fucking did it, and he did it right, and he did it good. Please. Pulling the knife back out a couple inches, but leaving it in there to be sure. Because you can't just take out the knife, where else would the knife go? Away? Wait, the knife could go away? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. The rest of Biden's good-ish policies, well, frankly, there isn't much of a rest to talk about. It's mostly bad stuff. But I know what you're thinking. Surely it can't be so much bad stuff that I can't say it all in a single breath. Well, why don't we find out? Since becoming president, Biden has... <gasps> continued the trend of border detainment and reinforcement between the U.S. and Mexico that has been snowballing from cabinet to cabinet for at least four presidents, has deported more people under Title 42 than Trump while defending his administration's use of that right in the courts, True. has continued using drone strikes, which, though fewer in number, have still killed civilians, despite the U.S. not being formally at war with any country, and, you know, also it being a war crime and all, 
He's called for increasing police budgets and police departments' access to military equipment. All true facts has stated. continued escalating tensions between the U.S. and China, Russia, Venezuela, and Cuba. Sanctioned Afghanistan, starving their people in the process. Has endorsed the Israeli apartheid government and its inhumane and relentless aggression against and occupation of Palestine. Has continued supplying the Saudis with arms used in Yemen. One of, if not the greatest humanitarian crisis in our lifetime. He's increased the military budget, tried abusing executive powers and seizing reporters' records before backing down once his plan was exposed. He's pursued the prosecution of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, increased the power of the surveillance state in a set of domestic anti-terrorism policies, staffed his cabinet Damn, with executives from- Damn, bro, when you stack it up like that, it feels like the, maybe we should be the ones who are being fucking sanctioned. That's crazy. You know, I just, uh, as well. As well as Russia, you know? Just saying, just the thought. Wall Street and the pharmaceutical, weapons, and fossil fuel industries channeled COVID test availability through insurance reimbursement, as opposed to free testing, vastly reducing the actual amount of testing that could have given us a more accurate idea of the state of the pandemic, inconveniencing everyone in the process, ignoring the uninsured and the poor completely, and empowering insurance companies to turn a profit. He has taken a passive role in intellectual property waivers for vaccines after declaring that to be one of his administration's key goals. Specific that was true, by the way. That is actually something that he claimed he was going to do, something that the, the World Health Organization is supposedly doing in India right now. They're, they're like still working on setting resources or sending resources and setting up facilities to train people in India. So they can deploy uh, vaccines at a lower cost that they create themselves. Part of it also isn't on Brandon, though. But this part, I will absolutely yell. Not at the World Trade or uh, World Health Organization. Not at Brandon. But at fucking Pfizer and Moderna. Who have repeatedly refused to cooperate with the World Health Organization. They have repeatedly refused to work with the World Health uh, Organization. And open up their patents on uh, it, it allowing uh, these facilities to like learn more about and, and be able to effectively and quickly and swiftly be able to come up with a solution, like a vaccine on their own. Part of the reason is because the mRNA research is heavily protected IP, partially because the technology around mRNA is currently being worked on to defeat Dude, I said World Trade Organization wrongly and corrected myself like three and a half minutes ago. And there's still broken brained mobile motherfuckers in the chat going, World Trade? You said streamer said something wrong, dude. Goddamn, bro. Okay, where was I? Yeah, Pfizer and Moderna for specific reasons, such as the fact that the mRNA vaccine technology is currently being worked on to potentially come up with a cure for AIDS, literally, and numerous other cancers refuses to open up the patents for the rest of the world they don't want to they don't want to allow other people to gain access to that technology specifically so we could protect the economic interests of american manufacturers and therefore slowing down the resolution of the pandemic and allowing human casualties and serious infections to continue at their present rate and also increasing the chance of new variants he's quietly stripped away protections from endangered species approved a record number of oil drilling permits upheld the construction of the Line 3 pipeline, and of course is constantly pressing for compromise with Republicans to thin out ambitious proposals and whining on the sidelines when Manchin or Cinema block a vote instead of using his role as president of the country to apply maximum pressure on their vote. Whew, one breath. See, I told you it wasn't that bad. I definitely didn't edit out all the dozens of breaths I had to take to get through that massive list. And that's just what's happened while he's been president. The pre-campaign dissections on Biden's decades-long bad record with civil rights, imprisonment, social welfare, sexual assault, war, segregation, and everything else aren't even mentioned here. What a good guy. The point is that when we say the lesser of two evils, we are still contending with this much evil, and it's important to know that. As always, sources for this video are in the description. Feel free to fact check any of these claims. Now, faced with this kind of depressing account, you might want to find comfort in local elections, where it feels like your vote actually counts for something, and your values of equality, justice, and the basic safety and decent life of all people though? are guaranteed. 
But there, too, in states and cities where Democrats act as a one-party state, their political decisions continue to hurt everyday people in the same way they do at the national level. Like a newly renovated wall in an elevator shaft, you're getting screwed at every level. From an advanced militarized police state in New York City, to a regressive local and state tax rate in Deep Blue Washington where the poorest 20% pay over five times more in taxes relative to the top 1%, the democratic record doesn't improve simply by lowering the scale to local politics. It's also, of course, in blue states where affordable housing is hardest to find. Education is most sharply divided between the rich and the poor. And inequality is rising fastest, to name just a few issues. After hearing all this, you might hear a voice in your head telling you that this is still the party of lesser evil. And most of the time, you're probably right. All of this could have just as easily happened under the previous guy. Not to mention the staffing of courts by far-right judges, the relatively greater number of bombs dropped, the total and unabashed environmental deregulation, the bolstering of fascist networks and far-right militias, and that list goes on too. But it still remains the case that defending a party that so easily casts you and the people you care for aside does not win you anything. If they cannot care about you this much, why care so much about them? Much more beneficial to the realization of your values and the way you want to see the world work is to spend maybe 2% of your time on pushing these institutions to the extent they will allow it, voting for whoever does the least harm in the short term, and the rest of the energy you set aside for politics, the 98% remaining, into bettering the world directly. Spend 15 minutes every four years slipping the paper into the box or pushing a touchscreen, and then spend the massive amount of time in between doing stuff that matters. Half of this country doesn't vote, and you've never seen that convince a Democrat to move left. So work outside elections. If it's mutual aid, it's mutual aid. If it's learning more about how to organize, what different political theories offer, general education about the plight and suffering caused. Our resident Lib Chatter sent a message said, Year one, what has Biden done? Mega threat. 1.9 trillion American rescue plan. Literally like almost a tenth of what was promised. Okay. 1,400 stimulus checks for adults, children, and adult dependents. Supposed to be 2,000, but age 1,400. Still less than Donald Trump. Remember that? Americans will remember. Doesn't matter if you remember it or not. One-year one year child credit expansion. Uh, again, literally a Mitt Romney policy that was even harder than that. A Mitt Romney policy was, was more extensive than this. Okay? This is the only thing we've been able to get done. Removed income uh, requirements made it fully refundable. One year EITC expansion. $350 billion state and local aid. $130 billion for schools and safe reopening. $40 billion for higher ed. Half of which must go to student aid. Extended 300 supplemental UI through September 2021. Already passed through. We're done. A lot of states were you know, pushing against it regardless. Uh, expanded eligibility for extended UI to cover new categories. Made $10,200 in UI from 2020 tax free. That was good. A lot of the stuff is good in this mega thread. We never say that it's, uh, you know, they're not doing that. But you can write something similar to this about even Donald Trump. You know that, right? Like, you can write, unironically, Donald Trump's last year in COVID recovery bills, and it would look exactly like this. So that doesn't mean that Donald Trump is good. I don't think you would ever agree with that, right? And the same thing goes for Brandon as well. Like $5 billion to fight homelessness. Oh, sick, man. That's a lot of money. State of California put down half of that just for the state of California alone. It's not like we're fighting homelessness. It hasn't happened. 100% COBRA subsidy. Oh, sick. God, liberal. The mind of a liberal is so rotten. Oh, it's great, dude. They're subsidizing COBRA. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically uh, a, an allowance for you to be able to, like, uh, for for the gov it's a bribe that the government pays to the insurance corp uh, to the insurance corporations to the insurance industry so that insurance will allow you to if you get fired for up to 36 months pay the entirety of your premiums while still maintaining your fucking uh workplace health care despite not being a part of your workforce anymore it's a way to fucking stop gaps in coverage as in Oh, you're fired now, but your insurance bill is still going to be like fucking quadruple the cost that you now have to pay. Oh, also, you don't have a salary. That's the American solution. That is the American solution to the healthcare problem. 
because our health care is literally tied to our employment here. Sick. Every single piece of this is like temporary or expired, by the way, so far. So that too. Like we live in such a dog shit country that insurers covering PrEP and HIV prevention drug, including all clinical visits related to it, is seen as like a big policy dub. New year round special enrollment period for low-income enrollees. Restored navigator program to assist ACA sign-up. <laughs> Eliminated all Medicaid work requirements. Permanently removed restriction on access to abortion pills by mail. Signed the Accelerating Access to Critical Therapies ALS Act to fund. Rescinded Mexico City policy global gag rule, which barred international nonprofits from receiving U.S. funding if they provided abortion counseling. Like, sick. But also, none of this still, you know... You, you have not countered a single one of the things that Biden did continue or didn't do that is profoundly harmful when the Trump administration was doing it, but all of a sudden is not something to even think about or consider when uh, the, the Biden admin is continuing it. Just remember that. Caused under our current economic and political model, then do that. If it's informing others and winning them to your side, spend your energy there. It is infinitely more valuable to create systems that resolve the problems you see directly when possible, to directly improve people's lives and fight to change the system that constantly underpromises and still manages to underdeliver than it is to fight tirelessly within the framework of a system built on preserving the decaying status quo. Everyday people's influence on a government of plutocrats is nearly zero. Working to change that government, or making it increasingly irrelevant through networks of solidarity, that is where your influence and your mark on the world will be the most felt. I understand that this isn't for everybody. That spending time on- Even the leftists forgot about the border shit, sadly. I 1 million percent did not. I've covered it regularly and routinely and non-fucking stop and do this day all the fucking time. Title 42 it being continued into the Biden administration against uh, judges at the federal level that have tried to stop using title 42 and then having biden administration prosecutors unironically defend it in the exact same way that unironically in the exact same way that the fucking trump administration did is actually disgusting abhorrent abysmal um not as bad as forgetting the top of the hour ad break though and then running it 10 minutes in you know? politics is exhausting and difficult and never feels like it amounts to much the thing is that you're probably already doing it. There's a chance you will have spent a tremendous amount of energy fighting tooth and nail for the lesser evil and come out on the other side with only meager rewards for your efforts. Insignificant compared to what you put in. Practically nothing. Spend that energy better. People who spend day and night talking about the lesser evil and harm reduction, either in the run-up to a big election or whenever someone starts critiquing the other kind of boys in blue, know this. It's a purposeful distraction and reduction from what politics really is. Organizing human society, not the spectacle of two guys duking it out. Nurture within yourself the voice that is already there telling you that the Democrats aren't doing enough for you and resist them at every turn. If you live in a safely blue state and don't have to worry about the even worse party getting through, vote third party unashamedly. The spoiler effect of first-past-the-post voting is a built-in feature of our electoral system, and threatening a party that does not give us enough where it feels safest is incredibly minor, but necessary to scaring them of our collective power. If you work in an industry that is already unionized or has the potential to be, use your collective power there too to get the gains you are owed and resist the people desperate to wrestle them away from you. By all means, pull the lever on the trolley, but then get off and start ripping apart the train tracks. I know that this is an idealistic narrative that's easy to cast aside, but really meditate on how much of your everyday life is poured into obsessing over what happens in a room full of old, wealthy people made almost completely unaccountable to you and me. And think about where that- Our third party options are fucking laughable, for the record. Unfortunate reality. Energy could go instead. Elections are not without their importance, but under a political and economic model where they will always stop short of actually representing our collective interests, they will never be what politics is really about. For one thing, it's because these systems weren't built with democracy in mind. The birth of the Republic happened at a very particular moment in history, when revolutionaries wanted to throw out the kings. Once they figured that out, 
they had a list of ideas about what they wanted to do with society, and they built their political and economic system accordingly, creating institutions that would deliver the changes they saw fit, not pristine displays of human democracy. The Founding Fathers were terrified of democracy, the idea that those dirty poors should have a say, and they built a political order explicitly on the idea of giving a few wealthy landowning whites the power to decide the politics and economy of a nation. Whatever mechanism let them- Can you vote for the Libertarian Party ones? That- what? Literally vote over the Libertarian Party ones? This fucking poster is coming from. Are people just like making shit up about me on the internet? Like, what the fuck? About like the craziest things created yesterday, following since yesterday. What's wrong with these people, man? Why are they like this? They have the silliest fucking take. Them do that is the one they kept and enshrined in a constitution. It's no accident that we have first past the post voting and politics based on territorial representation over political pluralism. It's what keeps the same people in power election after election and keeps any challenger party out. It's no accident that the country is led by a single guy with almost infinite political power. The founding fathers kinda liked the idea of a monarchy. One guy with all the power. Mono meaning one, archi meaning power, just not from an unelected, snaggletoothed Brit. It is no accident that the only real way to gain political power in this country is by cozying up to corporations and the wealthy, to be in the good books of the media institutions that reach into every American household. It's what keeps revolutionaries out. The point is, even if we all have the right to vote today, well, you know, except if you're under 18, a felon, not a citizen, forced to work that day, don't have the kind of ID that is now the right kind all of a sudden, you've been purged off a voter roll, have a disability that makes it impossible or nearly so to get to the polls, or generally speaking are part of some racial group your politician doesn't like. Just, just forget all that for a second. Even if we, quote, all have the right to vote today, we are still doing so within the bounds of institutions that are built around preserving a very specific status quo and the power of a wealthy few. People complain that Congress doesn't do anything because, well, yeah, that's the point. Under a political system like this one, and an economic model that allows a few people to exploit it to its limit, your values of egalitarianism, of justice, of guaranteeing people a decent life are just not going to be realized and certainly never to the extent that you think is morally correct. You're a good person. You want the best for yourself, for your family, for your friends, and for the rest of the regular, decent people in this country and around the world. The kinds of things we all want for our fellow human beings aren't going to happen as long as someone can go digging for power in deeper pockets. And as long as the capitalist, neoliberal status quo remains in place, there will always be deeper pockets than yours and mine. I realized that for some of my audience- After all these years and videos like these, are you trying to tell your viewers low-key they should video game the system they live in? What? This video may have come across as fairly accusatory. I definitely don't intend to attack anyone's beliefs, but it is important that we all get on the same page about just how ineffective liberalism really is. Changing your perspective isn't something any of us can do overnight. It takes dedication, hard work, and deconstructing some of the erroneous beliefs we hold. To make that easier for people, I try my best- Just nihilism, like I know the Dems suck, but it's better, and making things better for people even if it's not enough is not good. Dude, that- there's a difference, okay? You are- you are dying, uh, with a death by a thousand cuts rather than a fucking, uh, swift swing to the neck, okay? That's the problem. But in your position in society, you probably are relatively better off than the average citizen. So you, and I suspect you most likely live in like a nice city or something like that. Uh, have a decent job, uh, probably have decent family connections. And by the way, you could absolutely argue that I have had a similar, uh, similar uh, affluent beginning, which is true. I did, um, but I do not let that uh, affluent beginning uh, cloud my perspective like you do. Yeah, things are good for you and it's a, it's going to be uh you know marginally better for you probably. And there's always yeah, the inverse of that is also true. There's always going to be people that are suffering significantly worse no matter what. But that doesn't change the reality that we should make it a lot better. We should at least 
hold politicians accountable to, you know, follow on the promises they make for us and constantly not, uh, uh, you know, resort back to the whole, well, it's fine because the other side is so much worse. The alternative is so much worse as things get worse and worse overall year over year over year. That's why the Russia stuff is important because like a lot of Americans are, are angered by the actions of Russia, unjustifiable angers, uh, unjustifiable actions of Russia, right? You're mad, but you don't recognize that we do similar things. You don't recognize that we are too are a country run by oligarchs. Best to learn and understand as much as I can so that I can share it with others. And one way I like to do that is by listening to audiobooks. I travel a lot for work, so I have plenty of time to sit on planes and listen to fast- Anyway, yeah, this is the end of the video. All the agitation goes towards other countries instead of our ruling class. But that's deliberate. All agitation also goes towards, uh, uh, you know, our fellow citizens as well on, on issues that we normally do not even disagree on. Party lawns are drawn on arbitrary things that the majority of Americans would normally care about, but the active 30% actually have an opinion on, you know what I mean? Where they're just like, I fucking hate this. And yes, I'm talking about wedge issues once again. Every fucking goddamn day on this broadcast, I gotta bring up wedge issues, you know what I'm saying?